Take a physical inventory. The physical inventory feature in MaxTrax generates a parts list that you print and fill out with your actual part counts. Then those amounts are entered into MaxTrax, which updates your inventory. Let's take a look. From the menu bar, click on Parts Manager and select Take Physical Inventory. Here is where we store our open worksheets we're working on and our posted inventory worksheets for reference. As this notice says, we can go into our setups and select how these physical inventory worksheets will print out. Let's do that. Close. And from the menu bar, click on Setups and Repair Orders and Parts Invoices and click on Physical Inventory on the left. We can select to show current stock quantity on our printed physical inventory pages. I have this selected so I can see what MaxTrack says I have on hand. If we didn't have this box checked, the part numbers would be listed with a box next to it to enter our count, but no current quantity is listed. I like to have that info for reference, but on the other hand, not having a quantity to reference forces your parts counters to actually verify a quantity. We can also select to include buyouts, which are parts designated as a buyout part. Remember, these are parts that may have been added using the buyout feature because we thought we wouldn't ever stock that part, or we may have added these buyout parts to our parts list when we selected to import that part from an online catalog if your setups are set to add catalog parts to your inventory list. Buyouts are considered non-stock parts, so they would not show up on your inventory worksheet unless this box was checked. You may very well have some of these parts on hand, so I suggest selecting this option for a general inventory count. The option to include parts that show zero stock on hand will list parts that have a zero quantity of inventory, but you have a minimum and best quantity set in these part records, which means that you typically keep these parts in stock. Since you should have these stock parts on hand, I would also check this option so you'll look for these part numbers and you can enter a quantity next to the part number on the worksheet if you in fact have a quantity on hand, even though the system may show zero. Now this last option, include parts with no minimums or best quantities, will list all part numbers on your parts list, whether or not you have any on hand and those parts that you do not have a minimum or best quantity for, i.e. non-stock parts. Now checking this box could make your inventory worksheets pretty big, but by checking this box, you would have a line to enter a quantity for a part that your system says you have zero quantity, but you really may have some of these parts on hand. Your other option is to not check this box, and if you come across a part that's not on the worksheet, just handwrite those part numbers with their quantity on the worksheet somewhere, and then adjust the quantity to the correct amount in the system in the actual part record itself under Adjustments. For shops that have thousands of parts on their parts list, this is really a good idea instead of checking this box. So you'll notice as you check off more of these options, your inventory worksheets will typically get bigger, adding more parts numbers to your inventory worksheets. Let's go create a set of inventory worksheets to see how they look. Again, Parts Manager, and select Take Physical Inventory. And with this button, we can create a new set of inventory worksheets. And we get this notice. This notice says that once you create your inventory pages, the system wants you to actually count all of your parts and enter those counts into these worksheets before doing anything else, like adding parts to an RO, or importing parts from an online catalog, or entering a vendor invoice, really anything that would affect your parts inventory list. So you would want to generate these physical inventory pages right before you start to count your inventory. We'll click OK. Here we select the order that the list of parts on the worksheets will appear in. By part number, easy to scan the list to find the part number and enter the quantity, or by description, by product code if you've assigned product codes to all of your parts which will group them together, or by location, great if you have entered locations in your part records. Now let's think about this one for a sec. Remember from setups, these inventory worksheets will just list stocked parts unless you check those options boxes, right? Which we did. 
I find shops who stock parts do typically enter a location for their parts. So you could do an inventory on just your stock parts, don't check any of those options under setups, and use this sort by location. Makes it very easy to do. And last, you can order your list by German sort, which will use a German part number sort function to display your parts list in German part number order. This makes sense to German car shops whose shelves are organized using the German part sort order, not to worry if you're not familiar with this option. So let's create the physical inventory worksheets by part number. So here I have listed 10 pages of parts and note there are 25 parts per page. Once these worksheets are generated, we would print them out. Click Print Worksheets down here and either print the current page that's highlighted or enter a range of pages to print or just print all the pages in this set. Let's see what they would look like. We can see this is our physical inventory created on May 13th and this is page one. There's a line number with the part number, description, product code, the German sort if applicable, and here's the location. This is a very handy field for performing an inventory on stock parts. Now the short sold column is used for you to fill out on the printed pages. If you have a quantity listed, maybe a negative number, that part might be on an RO already. And if we're waiting for that part to be delivered, we are probably also waiting to enter the received vendor invoice that would correct our parts inventory quantity. So instead of saying that that new quantity for that negative number is zero in this example, which would put an inventory adjustment in max tracks to increase that quantity on hand, which of course would be wrong, we would note one on that short sold column instead because a quantity will be corrected once you input that received vendor invoice later on. Now my old quantity is listed, showing me what Max Trax thinks I have on hand. And then I'd write in the actual quantity counted in the new quantity column, and the initials go up here on this printed page for reference of who did the actual count. Now once these printed pages are all filled out, you would go back into those open worksheets by clicking the edit button, or simply double clicking on the line, again highlight, and click on the enter quantities button below or just double click on the line and then enter onto this screen your handwritten counts from the printed inventory worksheets. Now something to note here, you don't have to fill out every new quantity field on this page. If there's a bunch of zeros and there is on my demo copy of Max Tracks here, you could simply skip those fields. If you do skip those fields, the old quantity will not change. Only if there's a difference between the old quantity and the new quantity will there be an adjustment to your parts list, resulting in an inventory adjustment on your general ledger to the parts inventory accounts, typically the 13,000 inventory parts asset account, as well as an offsetting entry to the 56,000 account, the inventory adjustments, which is a cost of goods sold account. This automatic transaction occurs once you post this physical inventory, Let's look at how we post our entries. Now once this page is filled out, after you've entered all of your new quantities, you will enter the initials of the person who counted the parts. Then the person entering in the count would put their initials in the entered by field. And check this box, pages completed, which will mark this page as done. And by the way, these fields here tell you which section of the inventory worksheets you're on, if you sorted by product code or the German sort. So click OK and we'll get this warning if there are some of these new quantity fields back here, new quantity fields, without an entry. Remember I mentioned you don't have to make an entry for every part on the list, especially if you selected to include parts with zero quantities in your setup. This is just a warning and it lets you know again that if you do not enter a quantity, those parts are not updated by this physical inventory count and will not be affected. This only applies to items where the new quantity is blank. New quantities of zero will be used. So we'll just say yes to this warning. Now you can see this page is marked complete. We can still go back in and edit the count if needed. This is just to let us know that we've done our data entry for this page. 
We can close this screen and come back later on to enter more data until we're finished. Just click this button with the red X. Now once all these pages are marked completed, we're ready to post our worksheets. This is when we would click the green check mark to post worksheets, but make sure you're done, as once the physical inventory is posted, we cannot go back and change it. And keep in mind, you can always do a subset of these inventory worksheets. Leave a bunch of pages marked as not completed. That's not a problem. And just post what you have counted. Take a look here. We can click this radio button to view posted worksheets, but these cannot be edited. This enter quantities button just lets us open the pages and look, but see, you can't edit these fields. Remember, when we click that Post Worksheets button, it's grayed out now, we updated our parts list with those counted parts quantities and an entry was made on the general ledger, moving the cost of those adjusted parts quantities from your inventory valuation to the inventory adjustment account. This is actually a close only button for these already posted inventory worksheets. And notice this delete button is grayed out. We cannot delete a posted physical inventory but we can delete an open set of worksheets. Let's say we just wanted to take a look at a set of inventory worksheets. You can generate them, look them over on screen, print them out even, and enter in some numbers, but until they are posted, we can always delete them and start over. Like if someone needed to write up a quick RO after you've already created your worksheets. No big deal, just delete and start over. Now one other thing to note, let's look at this notice again up here. Please be aware that parts that have been placed on open repair orders and parts invoices are not counted as being an inventory and will not be included on these worksheets. So what this means is that parts your service writer has entered on these open jobs should be pulled off the shelf before your physical inventory counting starts. Put them in the bay, on your technician's carts, or in the vehicle so they're not counted. MaxTrax thinks if they are on an open RO already, they've been pulled off the shelf. Let's look at this last line here. However, parts returned to the vendor a return for credit purchase orders will be included in these worksheets, even though they're not physically here. This means that until you enter that credit memo from your vendor for return parts, Maxtrack still thinks that you have that part on the shelf, even if you've created a parts order form for that return. So make sure all of your credit memos for return parts are entered before you start your physical inventory. Or you could go into your open parts order forms and check for any credits awaiting paperwork from the vendor. Open those up and enter these counts on your printed parts inventory worksheets for those return parts listed here to keep your parts count accurate. Remember, doing a physical inventory periodically is what keeps your inventory correct keeps your inventory valuation correct. And for those of you using the financials and max tracks, this is when you would run your inventory valuation report and make any needed adjustments to the general ledger. Your 13,000 inventory asset account balance may vary from your valuation report because of rounding. Just make a journal entry from the 13,000 account to your cost of goods sold account so that your balance sheet and income statement are correct. Plus, the physical inventory is where you can spot trends that could uncover theft or poor parts handling, and that's important to your bottom line. And this concludes the lesson on Take a Physical Inventory.